Hi, and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Dr. Latrice Montgomery, and the purpose of this channel is to discuss marijuana from a scientific perspective. Now, if you were with me in the last video, you remember we discussed the difference between marijuana CBD and hemp CBD. And in that video, I noted that I would discuss the effectiveness of CBD, but that it largely depends on the condition that's being discussed. In this video, the plan is to provide an overview of CBD based on a review article that was recently published. If you're interested in learning more about this review article, please see the description box below. There is a link that's included there where you can go and read it in, in further detail. But if you don't have time to do that or don't want to do that, not interested in reading the full article, that's fine because I'm going to provide an overview of it in this very brief video. And as always, if you have questions, comments, or thoughts about the things that you hear, things that you read, please feel free to include them in the comments below. So the review article does a very nice job of discussing some of the issues that we raised in the previous video regarding CBD, regarding exactly what it is, its legal status, and how it varies from state to state. One of the things that it also touched on was quality control issues. So as a reminder, CBD is not approved by the Food and Drug Administration. However, there is an approved form called Epidiolex for very severe forms of uh, seizures, of epilepsy. But again, it's not FDA approved largely for other conditions. So without that FDA approval, it's unclear that what's on the label of CBD products that are bought in um, online stores or in local shops that those labels may not necessarily match exactly what's in the product. And you're also not able to tell if there are other contaminants and other things that might be harmful to you within those products. So it's really one of those things where you have to use it at your own risk. So the article does a very nice job of covering some of those issues, again, which we discussed pretty thoroughly in the previous video. So make sure you check that out. Another thing that the article talks about is drug-drug interactions. And this is an area that is often overlooked when people discuss marijuana and CBD in particular, um, and even marijuana more generally, but we could discuss that in another video. But thinking about CBD and its use, because people often think, oh, it's a cure-all. I can use it for anxiety. I can use it for pain. I can use it for all these conditions without thinking about how it might interact with other drugs that they're taking. And so that's where it gets a little bit tricky because there hasn't really been a lot of research in this area that looks at CBD and its interaction with other drugs for certain conditions. Now, the limited amount of research that has been done has focused on Epidiolex because, again, that's the FDA-approved form of CBD. And even within that limited amount of research in that one area of epilepsy, they found some very interesting drug-drug interactions that they discuss in the article. So it's important that people who are taking multiple drugs who have um, severe forms of epilepsy, that they're monitored when they're using CBD along with those medications. So I would imagine that that same kind of logic follows for other conditions as well. But again, we don't have a large enough literature to be able to discuss that. So if the plan is to ever use CBD, the recommendation should be that, it sh that you let your healthcare provider know about it so that way they're aware of your use of CBD and can begin to think about potential interactions between medications that you're taking that are prescribed and then the CBD that you're using from local shops or online stores, etc. So that's just something to always keep in mind in an area where we really need uh, much more research. Another area is around side effects of CBD. Now again, I think the theme here is that there's not a lot of research in these areas, but the research that has been done in this area has found some side effects, uh, which include things like uh, sleepiness and fatigue, uh, gastrointestinal problems, um, issues with diarrhea. But it's important to note that individuals who report um, diarrhea often report it from the use of too much oil rather than the use of CBD itself. So that's just something to keep in mind. And in very rare cases, some individuals have also reported elevated liver functioning, which means that there are um, there's some issues with liver inflammation and other issues regarding their liver. So again, these are very rare cases. Um, and so we definitely need more research in that area. And also its impact on suicide. 
And again, this is a very new area, very rare cases, but we are continuing to monitor that. So just keep in mind that the research is limited in these areas, but there is some research that is showing that there are some side effects to consider. So that's again, just want to reiterate the point of making sure that you let your healthcare professional know about your use of CBD so that way they can continue to monitor you just as they will with any other medication that you're taking. So again, the article does a very nice job of covering those areas, and some of which we discussed previously. The article also discusses specific conditions. Um, one is anxiety. So anxiety is a very hot topic, and in fact, here in Ohio, um, anxiety is being considered as um, a, for medical marijuana as one of the qualifying conditions. Um, but there again needs to be more work in that area. But as it relates to CBD for anxiety, there are, um, are a decent number of studies. However, those studies focus more on the use of CBD for pre-anxiety. So what I mean by that is oftentimes people may take CBD, say, before a public speaking engagement or before a big test. And so it's really designed to kind of help ease the nerves that people might potentially feel or they feel leading up to those anxiety provoking events. But when it comes to CBD for individuals who have actual anxiety disorders, there's less research in that area. So it's very important to make that distinction. So the use of CBD for kind of pre-anxiety or for anxiety provoking events versus CBD for anxiety disorders, those are two different things. And again, research supports um, more of the pre-anxiety area more so than anxiety disorder. So just keep that in mind. Another area that CBD has been used and um, there's kind of been a focus on is schizophrenia. And so this is an area where it's promising but not proven. So individuals have used um, higher levels of CBD and have found, um, you know, there's some trends in the right direction in terms of reduced symptoms related to schizophrenia. But again, it's more promising. There's a limited number of studies, but it hasn't been proven. So that's important to keep in mind. Now, seizures is an area that I've already discussed. There's epidiolex, it's been approved by the FDA. So as you might imagine, there are tons of studies that are looking specifically at the use of CBD for other forms of seizures. Because again, the CBD that's approved for, by the FDA for um, seizures are approved for two very severe forms of seizures. But in terms of just other types of refractory seizures, CBD is not approved for that. So in that area, they'll say that the research is promising because obviously there are some conditions that it's been approved for, but it hasn't really been proven to work for other types of seizures that maybe aren't as severe. So it's just important to keep in mind there are some nuances that are associated with the use of CBD and its effectiveness. And last but not least, areas that people often use kind of medical marijuana in general, but also um, CBD in particular for is like pain and spasticity, like kind of muscle spasms and like tightness of muscles and stiffness, um, and, like, and also Parkinson's disease, which is a central nervous system disorder. So unfortunately, the research in this area for the, for the use of CBD for those conditions is very limited and weak. So there's not a lot of research that supports its effectiveness for those conditions. So the study again does a nice job of highlighting the specific studies that, um, that we, I, I know I talk a lot about this study said this, this study said that, but when in the article it kind of gives some very specific details about the study. So if you're interested in reading more about that, make sure you take a look. But essentially, it provides a nice summary of all of those conditions, and those are conditions that are people are commonly using CBD for. But again, CBD has been touted for you know migraines, for fatigue, for I mean you name it, people are using CBD for it. So there are also many other types of review articles that are out there and that are available. So if you're interested in me discussing the use of CBD for other conditions, please make sure you include it down in the comments below. I'm happy to you know, go and search for review articles or just kind of share my two cents on what I know about specific conditions as it relates to CBD. And the plan is I'll probably do a couple more videos on CBD um, because it's a very hot topic and um, it's something that people often ask me about. 
But then we're also going to move forward and talk about um, recreational marijuana use as well as uh, medical marijuana use. So that's kind of the plan for the future. If you have any ideas or thoughts about that plan or things that you want to hear, please, please, please comment down below. I would love to hear from you, love to have discussions with you. And as always, I thank you so much for your time. Make sure you check out that article in the link below. Please like, comment, share, subscribe. And I look forward to talking to you next time when we will discuss all things weed.